killed yet. At this point, this Bradley has been hit with three IEDs now. The gunner and the tank commander of this Bradley suddenly decide, you know what? Fuck this, I'm done being in this Bradley. So they get out of the Bradley and leave the driver, who is a 19-year-old kid and has never been outside the wire in Iraq before, in the vehicle by himself. <laughs> Hello, welcome back my friends. If you're new here, I am Lance B. And today, I want to give a big shout out to both Jordan Reese and... I'm already going to know I'm going to mess this up, and I apologize if I do. Erd, Erd Nuss Bear 42. Erd Nuss Bear 42. If I mispronounce that, I am sorry. But both of you really want to see more campfire stories, and I do too. So today we are going to react to more of Mike Bird Fire featuring Zach Hazard, uh, campfire stories, Bradley slash gloves is that what the is that the name of it? yeah bradley slash love slash gloves hooked on phonics lance words words use words people can understand you uh so yeah i'm really excited to check this out and uh thanks for the comments and thanks for the suggestions because you guys are really loving these campfire stories and i am too and uh if you guys want me, to, I know a few other people are like, are you going to do more of the Fallout 4 with the Mike Burn Fire? I probably will. I'm going to mix them up. Um, but since you, the campfire, so you, that's been blowing up. Guess what? If it gets good numbers, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to react to the ones with better numbers. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. Because that's what you want to see and not me jibber jong. Here we go. Hey, all you little fucking nerds watching online. We like to fuck in the ass. X-rated. Woo. Yeah, yeah, come on, baby. Were you also required to clear a Bradley at one point? Why would they call you a small arms repairman? Um, because technically... <laughs> because technically a Bradley is small arms? Yeah, technically, as far as the army is concerned, the M242 chain gun on the front of a Bradley is considered small arms. Good grief. So are 155mm howitzers. I, I don't know how much larger small guns can get. Uh, I think their logic behind it was, well, it's small enough that a person could theoretically move it, so it must be small arms. <laughs> Oh, the truck broke down. Get our small arms repairman in over here. Yeah, a six-cylinder engine is kind of like a gun. <laughs> I, I would tell the story about me having to clear the Bradley, but it is a long story, and it kind of makes me really angry. So one night, I'm sleeping in my barracks room in Iraq. Someone comes and starts pounding on my door and wakes me up. Specialist, get up, get up. There's someone on the phone for you. All right, fine. So I go answer the phone, and it's somebody from one of the other companies, and they're telling me, we need you to come over to this gate over here and uh, clear Bradley. What do, you, what do you mean, clear Bradley? Well, we need you to come make sure that the main gun on this Bradley is cleared. Before we go, I thought Bradley was going to be like a Fort Bradley. I had, I was so off on this theory. I really thought they were going to be like, oh, I was at Fort Bradley. Boy, I was wrong on that one. And uh, FYI, love the little eyebot they have just chilling right here on the side listening to the story, too. Gotta love that. I mean, I can do that, theoretically. I haven't worked on one since I was in, like, job training, but, alright, where, where's the gunner? Well, he's gone. Where's the driver? He's gone, too. <laughs> where's the tank commander? He is also gone. Where was everybody out to lunch? When they said gone, I assumed they meant that everybody in this Bradley had been killed and they had towed it back to the gate and that they needed me to come clear it before they brought it into the base. Because you can't just be driving a armored vehicle around with a 25mm chain gun loaded on it through a base with people in it. Why not? You know somebody would be stupid and be like, look, I'm a gunner, ha <laughs> ha, and then they would just rip 12 rounds through the side of a building. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. So the next day I found out from somebody else that what had happened is some of the people on gate guard had noticed that there was just a Bradley driving up and down one of the main routes by itself, with no other vehicles with it. That, that's abnormal. They're normally part of a caravan, right? Yeah, they're normally part of a convoy. Why is this Bradley driving around by itself? So they get in a Humvee, they drive out to there, and they find this Bradley, 
They have to get in its way because it it keeps trying to drive away. That's so weird. They can't get a hold of him on any on any radio. There's ghosts. So they basically just park right in front of it and flag him down and take like 20 minutes to coax this driver out of the vehicle, reassuring him that yes, in fact, they are U.S. soldiers and no, they're not going to try and kill him the moment he gets out of the vehicle. I'm, I'm still not sure why he was driving around by himself. Oh, I'll get to that. What happened was this Bradley was part of a armored vehicle convoy that had driven through five different areas of operation and this Bradley got hit with an IED. Everybody was a little shooken up, but they were okay. So they moved the Bradley to a different spot in the convoy, kept going. It got hit with another IED. So they moved it to another spot in the convoy. They're just rearranging deck chairs in the Titanic. And it got hit with another IED. (laughs) It's still, yeah. At this point, this Bradley has been hit with three IEDs now. The gunner and the tank commander of this Bradley suddenly decide, you know what, fuck this, I'm done being in this Bradley. So they get out of the Bradley and leave the driver, who is a 19-year-old kid and has never been outside the wire in Iraq before, in the vehicle by himself. And then they start the convoy back up. Ten minutes later, guess what happens? I I don't know. The Bradley gets hit with another IED. This one is so bad that it knocks out the comms in the vehicle, meaning that the driver can no longer talk to anybody else. The driver hits his head against the inside of the vehicle, gets knocked unconscious, and the rest of the convoy goes, he's got to be dead, and leaves. The vehicle is still functional after being hit four times? And they leave him. Completely forgetting the first part of the of the soldier's creed, I will never leave a fallen comrade. They just leave him. Didn't even grab his dog tags? No, nothing. The rest of the convoy just went, fuck it, drove off. Driver wakes up. He's suffered a serious concussion. Doesn't know where he is. Whoa, whoa. Doesn't know why he's in, the, in a Bradley by himself. Doesn't know where anybody else is or why he's bleeding from the side of the head. Jeez. Can't reach anybody on the radio. The Blue Force tracker system is down, so he can't figure out where anybody else is so he just starts doing the only thing he can think to do which is drive up and down the main route all by himself looking for the rest of his convoy because he assumes there's no way they would leave me behind why would they leave me oh the story's kind of dark this poor 19 year old kid got left all by himself in the middle of iraq because his tank commander and his gunner decided they didn't want to be in a vehicle that got blown up anymore it seems so irresponsible to leave him there it was incredibly irresponsible of pretty much everybody in that convoy. Yeah, no shit. The fact that not a single person went, um, why are we just leaving Private Snuffy in this vehicle all by himself? I can only hope that the lieutenant or officer who was in charge Snuffy. of that convoy got his ass handed to him and got court-martialed and yeah. was never in a position of command ever again. It is incredibly reprehensible and is one of the reasons why I got out of the military. One of the very many. One of the many reasons. That's... I have a similar story. One time I was left in charge of guarding the toilets, and uh, I used one of the toilets, and I clogged it. And I had to unclog it, but we didn't have access to the supply cabinet, so I cleared it manually. Oh, God! <laughs> Just with your hands? Yeah. Oh, that's foul. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I suppose so. so it's kind of like the same thing for me. Uh, yeah, no, getting left by your unit in Iraq to die is totally the same thing as having to clear a toilet with your hands. <laughs> We both suffered! My main complaint is that most of the time the army was so disorganized and so stupid about what it would use its resources for. It was just infuriating to me. I never knew about that. Sometimes military incompetence can be funny. Most of the time it's horrifying. Our base sergeant major while I was in Iraq had the biggest heart on for making sure that everyone still had their seatbelts on while they were driving military vehicles. He would sit outside in a Humvee on one of the main routes and stop convoys that were not part of his command or even his jurisdiction and walk up to each vehicle individually and make sure that everyone in the vehicle had a seatbelt on. This sergeant major would have his driver park the Humvee in the exact same spot every day. And eventually, one of the local insurgents realized, hey, Somebody parks a Humvee in this same spot every single day and shot the gunner in the neck. The insurgents killed the seatbelt checker? No, insurgents killed the gunner of the seatbelt checker because there's no fucking justice in this world. Ah. Our base also had this big old blimp. 
That's with a multi-million that's dollar died. digital infrared camera hanging from the bottom of it. <laughs> Just the way he said blimp. it. Yep, big old blimp. Like the Goodyear blimp, but a little bit smaller. God. Nobody could ride in it. It just had a very expensive digital infrared camera that could see long distances. Instead of using the blimp to look outside the base and see if insurgents were trying to blow us up, our base commander used the blimp to look inside the base to make sure people weren't going over the five mile an hour speed limit. And make sure they were wearing their seat belts. What a good use of resources. Yeah. First of all, can we go back to that poor kid who had to be by himself in first of all let me check something out i have no idea what a bradley is what it looks like a bradley uh usmc i guess that's that's the best way to narrow it down an m2 bradley okay okay Okay. Okay. So basically it looks like that. That's that's what a Bradley looks like. Wow. Wow. Did I get hit four times? Woo, baby. Jesus. I, I Chihuahua. Oh, wow. Ooh. And everyone just leaves him? Everyone just leaves this poor 19-year-old kid. That poor kid. I, I, Jesus I remember when I was 19, I'd be sh shitting my pants. Poor kid. Good Lord. And then some other asshole just wants to worry about checking seatbelts and shit and five miles an hour. Good Lord. Let's keep going. <laughs> At one point, I was issued a belt-fed machine gun. I don't know why. I think probably because somebody in my chain of command was mad at me. <laughs> so they gave me an M249 because they were like, fine, make him carry around this 13-pound piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I discovered on a firing range that if you use this machine gun while wearing Nomex shooting gloves, there was the potential that the glove could get caught in between the trigger and trigger guard, thus making the machine gun continue to fire even when you release the trigger. First... I actually talked to my chain of command and said, Hey, this is really unsafe. Can I cut the trigger finger off of my Nomex glove so that I don't accidentally have a runaway gun and shoot somebody? Was the Nomex glove issued to you? Yes. Ah, you can't do it then. Well, no, they were issued to me, but the, the Nomex gloves are considered an expendable item. They don't expect them back. Oh, okay. And they said, You know what? That's a really excellent safety concern, specialist. Thank you for bringing that up to us. Why don't you go ahead and do that? And I went, Okie dokie. So I cut the trigger finger off my Nomex glove. Well, a bunch of other people saw me running around with a glove that had one finger cut off of it. And they went, that looks cool. So they cut all the fingers off their gloves. Oh, <sighs> brilliant. And Started then trend. literally the next day at formation, everyone got yelled at because a bunch of people were going around cutting the fingers off their Nomex <laughs> gloves. And their excuse was, yeah, but I saw Specialist Zach do it. So that means I can do it too. Specialist Zach had a legitimate safety concern you guys are just frickin' idiots. It's nice to have a story about your leadership that doesn't exemplify how stupid they were. I felt validated. That <laughs> I mean, he was a trendsetter. Uh, hey, hey. Zach, you were a trendsetter. <laughs> they thought it looked cool. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This was a good one. Um, yeah. Uh, if you guys any, have any ideas. Apparently. Um, uh, hold on here. Who is it? Yeah. Jordan realized, said to me that the. Um, the anger management was like a good one to start with. And thank you for saying that because usually with my luck, I would pick for some reason that came up first. Thank God for, because I have the worst luck and usually I would probably have that one on the last of the rotation of all my videos and wish and afterthought 
forehand for hmm what's the word i'm thinking of as an afterthought i will use afterthought um i wish that would be the first one so thank you for saying that was a good one to start with with the campfire stories that's what i'm saying as soon as I, I'm done recording and I'm editing, I'll think of the word. That always happens. During the video, I'll sound like a bubbling fucking idiot. And then right in the editing, I'm like, that's the word I should have put in there. Oh, no, I should have said that. That sounds a little bit more clear. I don't know. I'm still learning. After three years on this channel, having now two channels, I'm still learning. It's a learning experience every time. So, um... I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any suggestions on the other campfire stories, uh, leave in the comments down below. And uh, of course, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and bye. I almost burped just then. I'm, I'm in a real class.